The International Prisoner Transfer Program began in 1977, the year that I was born. This allowed prisoners from other countries in which they had been convicted and sentenced of their crimes to come home and do their time in the U.S. My name's JC, let's get into this video. I never heard of it. El AJC, una historia en el camino La vida le dio duras lecciones desde niño Se fue creciendo entre las drogas y las calles Chicago Gangster, muchas malas amistades Solo quería ser el dueño de su imperio Y le costaron muchos viajes hacia México La vida es chula, compa Entre cantinas y las viejas con tequila y mucha droga, compa JC tenía un futuro ya seguro Con 17 se tornaría muy oscuro Iba de vuelta con rumbo para USA Iba cargado pero lo paró un retén Y así comienza la otra parte de su vida Encarcelado por una mala movida Hey guys, what's up? My name is JC, I am Ron Strong If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell Thumbs up, thumbs down Leave a message, tell me what you think If you're part of my crew, you already know Mi raza, mi familia, mi pandilla Everything. Suvanse la suburban. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, what's up, guys? Before I start this video today, I want to give a shout out to Chicano Barber. It's a barber shop on Lynchfield. That if you go in there, I'm always about. You know how I am about like uh, history and just everything. If you go into this shop, they have. I mean, pictures after pictures of cultura, lowriders. I mean, you name it. And my badass barber, the only person that gets to cut my hair, because once I find somebody that fades me perfect, I do not change nothing. So if you want a badass fade, you go to this barber shop and you ask for Berlin. What up? All right, guys, let's get into this video. So I was lucky enough to be able to get transferred from Mexico into the United States, because if I would have stayed in Mexico, I don't think I would have made it. I don't think I would have made it out. And you know, I had one of my friends that actually did stay out there and do his whole time out there. They don't have good time. <laughs> they don't have 80%. They don't have drug programs. They don't have none of that stuff. You do 100% of your time and sometimes even extra. There was a lot of dudes that were already done with their, you know, minimum of 10 years or 15 and they were still there. They even did a hunger strike, hunger strike, and I felt so bad when I was walking by them with food and these dudes were like on the floor like dying. Yeah, so like I said in my past video, try to stay out of uh, other countries and catching time. You know, when I got transferred by the American Council, it actually cost me $4,000. I don't know how much that really went to the United States because <laughs> we are in Mexico but that's how much they charge me to transfer me and I had to wait for them to do a big roundup in Mexico because there was 32 Americans on that plane when they flew and picked us all up so they did a big big pretty much uh, sweep from all the way from Oaxaca all the way up um, Everyone on that plane, I'm not gonna lie, everyone on that plane was messed up mentally. And when I say messed up, I'm talking about you knew that something was wrong with them and their brain mentally just by looking at them. I mean, just, they were out of it. You know, and this is way before they even called it PTSD. Like, this is the early, mid 90s. Like, they didn't even have a name for it. So, it's, it's one of those things when you've seen too much, done too much, and just been around too much, it messes you up. 
it messes you up big time. And I think this is one of the biggest reasons why as soon as we got to America, they pretty much pulled us all into a room and started showing us movies from, you know, Vietnam vets, war, war vets, people that have seen and been through a lot and what it does and changes you mentally and just what it does to you. You know, like I said, they didn't call it PTSD back then. So, you know, they were still trying to find, I guess, the medical term to people just being messed up from seeing too much. You're granted two days for every one day that you did in Mexico. So if you did a year, it's two years. You got time off for pain and suffering. I would like to say that if I wouldn't have been young and in my prime of like violence and my prime of just seeing a lot of things because I had already seen a lot of stuff, you know, in Chicago. I had already seen, you know, a lot of my friends being, you know, shot, killed, uh, ran over, all these things. I would not have been primed to be able to go through everything that I seen over there. And like, like I'm gonna s s tell you later in later videos, you know, um, you know, when sex offenders went in there, it was, it's not like the United States where they put them in special custody. And no, like they went in there and, you know, but that's another video, another story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that one later. <laughs> it's just a different world, man, a different world. And so what they did is they round everybody up, everybody. Like I said, there was 32 Americans on that plane. I looked back and I looked at everybody and everybody looked pretty bad, pretty, pretty bad. And they flew us, it was like a movie, man. Like first they flew us to Saltillo, then from Saltillo, they took their time. Don't think they just took us all in one sweep and nah. They came, boom, they picked us up from, from, from San Luis Potosí, we went to Saltillo. Saltillo, we were there at that Cerezo for a couple of days, I want to say about a week. Then from uh, Santiago, we went to Monterrey, Topo Chico. At Topo Chico, we were like there for like two weeks. Uh, from there, we went to Juarez. In Juarez, we were there about, I want to say about two weeks also. And then they jumped us over to El Paso, La Tuna, federal prison. Well, then when they jumped us over, it was like something out of a movie, man. We flew in in a jet, you know, all the Mexican federales with big high power rifles, all the U.S. Marshals and, you know, police with with guns and everything. It looked like something out of a movie. And, you know, it, it was crazy because here you have all these Americans that just want to go home. They actually just want to get the hell out of that country. But it looked like some straight cartel shit. And it was just like uh, I was doing time in a state prison in Illinois and I was in East Moline and I guess the, the, the feds lost track of me <laughs> and they sent the marshals to come get me and they literally came onto the yard and escorted me out. Like, like I was like this big drug lord or something. Like it helped me, it actually benefited me in the long run. I'll tell you guys later that story. <laughs> what? I lived a period I've lived a very interesting life, I must say. And I'm very, very lucky that I'm out. And I'm very lucky that I'm in one piece. And I'm not gonna say I'm all there mentally. I try to be. I try to be because my biggest thing is to walk the walk, talk the talk, man. And actually help guys like me because I know there's a million guys that have been through what I've been through. And set you off. I know there's a lot of guys that suffer the same stuff that I, I do. And my, my biggest thing is like, jail's not cool, man. Trying to be tough ain't cool. Guns ain't cool. Selling drugs ain't cool. Like all this shit, it's not cool. And it was all, I did it all to try and fit in my whole life because I used to think that that's all I knew and it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't. I'm actually living 10 times better today than I was back then when I had all that money, when I had all that stuff, because I'm not watching my shoulder. I don't wanna fight with nobody. I have nothing bad to say about nobody. I'm just doing me, that's it. I wake up, I take care of my family, I work out, 
I try to eat healthy, but you know, I'm, I'm always gonna be a fat boy at heart. I love tortas, you know. The one thing that I miss the most about Chicago is the food. <laughs> you know, I had my set little places, El Milagro, torta, the tacos del, del Pastor from the Comales, all those places, Restaurant Nuevo Leon, you know, all those places I miss, but you know, it is what it is. So this is why I share my stories. When they transferred me over to Latuna Federal Prison, this is back in the 90s, like I said, when the feds were the feds. Just not anybody was in the feds back then. I'm talking about this is when they had the big, big guys. I met some really, really big guys when I went in there because I was actually the youngest guy on the yard. I met one of the big time crip leaders that that's the first time I actually started to see that gang members that had a lot of money and were business, smart business entrepreneurs did not talk street, did not, just because they came from there didn't mean that they stayed the same. Does that make any sense? So like, I'm not going to say no names, but that big dude from the Crips was there and he had been indicted on, on, on a shitload of stuff and this dude was so articulate, so smart, so everything. He's the one that actually got me into like reading books and, and doing all this stuff. But you know, the feds were a complete different person. This is when, when I went in and I met some really big people that actually changed my life later, you know, later in the game when I started getting into the games. The feds back then is when uh, Wendy's sent all the food for like the chicken burgers. Um, we have pop machines, you picked whether you wanted chocolate or regular milk, chicken or waffles. It, it was crazy, man. It, it was, feds were completely a different ball game back then. But with that being said, no matter where, where you're at or how good you're eating or where you're doing your time, a cage is a cage, whether it's made out of gold or just metal. My name's JC. I am Run Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, if you live easy, life is hard. If you live hard, life can be really easy. And by that, all I'm saying is just put in the work. Consistency, at the end of the day, builds something great. I'll check you guys on the rebound.